Hello, uh, welcome to um, this presentation by APM Capital in partnership with the CME. Um, just got a very, very, we're very, very sorry. We've just had a few technical problems that's made us um, start a little late. Um, but thank you for joining us. Um, it's going to give a couple of minutes for people to join. Um, very pleased to welcome uh, David Gibbs from um, CME to join us. Um, uh, David has decades of experience in trading futures and options, starting in the open outcry pits in Chicago. Um, APM Capital, we are um, a regulated broker in Abu Dhabi, and we offer our clients um, access to foreign exchange and CFDs, and also to the world's um, derivatives exchanges, including the uh, CME, and we're pleased to be in partnership with them for another webinar. Um, so if uh, you're ready, over to you, David. Thank you, Mark. Um, glad that uh, everyone was able to join. Thank you for, for joining in this uh, this webinar series. We're going to be um, looking at a rather speci a specific product group at CME, short dated options. Uh, and I thought, uh, as but before we get started, I have to begin by first of all stating that our time together today is meant to be educational and informative and is in no way meant to be construed as offering investment advice, nor am I making any trading recommendations. You're going to see several examples of potential trading opportunities that might be available, but I don't want you to mistake them for my making recommendations. I thought it might be best to begin with just a little bit of background, particularly since we're going to be talking about short dated options, to talk about options at CME, and then a little bit of background on options in general. Uh, CME is a uh, regulated futures exchange group in, in, based in Chicago, and we list standardized futures and options on futures products. The difference between futures and options can be rather dramatic. Uh, if we consider uh, the profile of a, of a long futures position, in other words, buying or going long a futures contract, your relationship between uh, price and profit and loss is uh, symmetrical and also um, linear. Uh, if the price goes up of the contract you're long, you make money. If the price goes down, you lose money. Um, one of the other wonderful features about the futures market is the ability to sell a, a contract short. Uh, this does not involve having to borrow a position from a broker. Uh, nor is it done by selling something out of inventory. It's as simple as selling the contract short, creating a short position. That short position is also symmetrical and linear in terms of its performance relative to price and profit and loss. If the price of the, of the short position goes down, uh, the trade is profitable. If the price of the underlying goes up, uh, it's, it's a loss. Uh, now, if we compare that to options, it's slightly different. Uh, options have uh, strike fixed strike prices, and they also, as a result, can limit losses uh, for the long position, creating what's known as an asymmetrical risk reward profile. They also, as a part of their premium uh, calculation, include implied volatility based on the price and, and other inputs, and that also allows them to be traded from a volatility standpoint. So they can be looked at slightly differently than uh, an outright long or short futures position. Example, um, if you're familiar with options, you know there's two, two, two types. There's puts and calls. Calls representing an underlying long position, a put representing an underlying short position. Uh, a long call, therefore, represents uh, an outright or expressing a positive view on the underlying product. But because the loss of a long call position is limited to the premium paid, if you compare this di uh, 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 di uh, diagram to the, the one showing the futures, which was linear and symmetrical, uh, the, prop the, uh, the losses are limited to the premium paid while the upside is theoretically unlimited. That's why we refer to options as having an asymmetrical risk reward relationship from the long standpoint. A long put would operate in just the opposite fashion. Uh, it would profit uh, it theoretically unlimitedly to a, a falling price of the underlying, but the losses to rising prices would be limited to the premium paid. This is an important uh, piece of background information, if you, particularly if you're new to options and how they work relative to 
uh, the underlying marketplace. Now, options at CME must always be considered as options on futures, which means that the underlying instrument that the options at CME are being priced to is a futures position. If the long position exercises their rights, they will be exercising them into a futures position, not into spot, not into a cash settled uh, position. Likewise, uh, because some of our options are on physically settled futures contracts, and in order to be able to deliver uh, that exercised position, there has to be open interest in the futures contract. Many of our physically settled futures contracts that have options listed on them, those option expiration dates are uh, prior to uh, the last trading day or even uh, the first delivery day of uh, the underlying futures contract. And just to give you an example, this is um, the April gold contract, gold contract for delivery or for expiration and delivery. The last trading day for that futures contract, you can see, is the 26th of April of this year. Its first delivery date, however, is the first day of April. Now, you could theoretically have all the open interest delivered on the first delivery day, which would make a long options position on that April gold contract impossible to be able to uh, assign a position to unless the option expired prior to first delivery day. So you'll notice that the April gold options expire and, and stop trading on the 25th of March in the month that precedes their name. This is very common at CME with our physically settled commodity and, and even some of our uh, uh, physically settled financial contracts. And the logic is pretty intuitive once you understand that in order for there to be futures open interest to exercise into uh, a contract that has a delivery date, as in this example, uh, you have to expire that futures contract prior, or excuse me, the options contract prior to first delivery day. There are two types of option styles available at, on many of our uh, options contracts at CME, American style and European style. This does not refer to geography. It's just referring to, it, it's, an, it's, a, it's a term in options that refer to when in the, uh, the long position can elect to exercise their rights. Uh, a, a long position of an American style option has the optionality of exercising at any time prior to that option contract's expiration, while a European style option only allows uh, that right to exercise at the point of expiration. Um, distinctly different, uh, always do your own homework and understand which option style you're dealing with. And in many cases with CME's contracts, we have certain products that I have both American and European style, depending on the option itself. So be mindful of that and uh, do, do your due diligence. The risk reward structure for an options position, uh, the option buyer, as mentioned, pays the premium and has the limited risk. Their reward theoretically to a net long position is, is open-ended. The option seller uh, who collects the premium is in just the opposite position. Their reward is limited to the premium that they receive and they have theoretically unlimited or open-ended uh, risk. So it, in the case of CME, uh, the long positions, the buyers of options and the payers of premium, uh, that premium constitutes all they have to put up. They pay the premium and it stays in their account. Uh, that's all they have to put up to create that position. Option sellers, on the other hand, because of that theoretical unlimited list risk, have to maintain that premium within their account and may also have to put up additional margin to maintain a net short or a net short options position. Uh, that's an important thing to be mindful of as well. And in many cases, a lot of brokers will not allow net short positions in options unless they've got a corresponding or offsetting long physical or uh, other cash position. So 
the popularity and the increased trading in options, particularly short dated options, is driven by a lot of things. Most of it is industry demand, and that industry demand is around the fact that options can allow both risk managers and traders an enhanced ability to either focus on a specific risk that can be mitigated by uh, an options position or the ability uh, to gain um, gamma or uh, increased leverage uh, by using the option. And that that is economic rather than financial leverage. Options trade at a, what are known as a premium. You pay a premium. You pay or receive premium in options, and that premium is made up of two component parts. The intrinsic value, which is based on the options strike price relative to the underlying product's futures price, and then time value. Uh, the intrinsic value of the call is made up of the market price minus the strike price. So if the underlying futures contract is trading above the price of the, of the call strike, it is said to be in the money and have intrinsic value. For a put, it's just the opposite. Uh, the intrinsic value is based on the strike price with my, subtracting the market price of the underlying, because if the, if the futures price is below the strike price in a put, it is said to be in the money and therefore would have intrinsic value. Time value just represents the difference between the intrinsic value of the option uh, and the uh, and the, the amount of premium that, that's uh, being bid or offered. So an options position gives the option buyer the right, but not the obligation to take a long or a short, depending on whether it's a put or a call, uh, on a specific futures contract at a specific price on or before, and that's on if it's an American option uh, expiration date. For the right, to have that optionality or to be able to take that position, they pay a premium to the seller. Uh, the option seller can keep that premium, but they're responsible for, uh, in the event that the option is assigned, creating the opposite position uh, in the futures market so that the long position can get there long or short. So for example, if I'm long a call option and I exercise my right to a long position, in the futures contract, there has to be a offsetting or an opposite short position. That's what the short call would be assigned. They would be assigned or would have to create, we would create a short position in that futures contract. Uh, and the short position has to have the wherewithal to be able to do that. So the things that go into pricing options, regardless of their time frame are basically the price of the underlying products. So it, with CME options, that will always be a futures contract price. The strike price of the option itself, the, the, the volatility that's implied in that marketplace, and then what's most important for today's conversation, the time left until expiration. Uh, it might be useful to kind of review very quickly some of the, what, what are known as the Greeks because they refer to the Greek letters that they've been assigned. Um, the inputs or the, 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 the things that go into the theories of pricing options premium. Delta ref, re, it reflects the effect of the change of the underlying market, in this case, it's the futures price, to the options premium. Uh, so that in calls, it's a positive number. In puts, it'll be a negative number. If the market goes up on a strike price, the delta will increase. Uh, if the market goes down that uh, on that strike price, the delta will uh, get smaller. If the market goes down, the delta on a put will increase. If the market goes uh, up, the delta on a put will decrease. Gamma reflects the uh, the change of the delta two changes in the underlying. And this is going to become very, very important to us in this conversation about short dated options because the gamma is most sensitive when a, uh, a strike price is very close to at the money and it increases as the options expiration date approaches. So you're going to see in a few minutes just how dramatic that input can be on the gamma. And in fact, a lot of short dated options traders are specifically using the short dated options to trade the, the positive gamma, the increased gamma on the positions. 
Vega represents that Greek that measures the premium sensitivity to changes in volatility. Uh, and this is one in, uh, case where the Vega will decrease uh, as the option approaches expiration and is most sensitive when it's at the money. So the further out of the money it goes, it drops dramatically as you approach expiration because the chances of the premium changing to changes in volatility diminish as time to expiration uh, approaches closer. Theta is the other one we're going to be paying a lot of attention to because that measures the effect of time decay on the option premium. And its greatest sensitivity is being at the money and closer to expiration. So you may recall in previous options presentations, I've referred to delta, excuse me, as the theta, representing the effects of time decay and that time decay increases as the option approaches expiration at an accelerating rate. So let's look at some examples. Uh, the pricing fundamentals of long versus short dated options could be illustrated in this table. Let's assume that the, uh, the underlying futures contract is the March E-mini S&P futures, and they're at a price of 48.44 even. In the table, you'll see two different options. In this case, they're both calls. They're both at the same price, 48.40. That's the third column but you'll notice they have two different expiration dates. One is a short dated option with only 14 days until expiration. It expires on February 2nd. The other is a longer dated option with 56 days and expires on March 15th. So you've got the same underlying futures contract that affects both because uh, that's the futures contract that relates to these two expirations, the same strike price and the same style of option. What's different? Let's take a look. Notice the premium on the short dated versus the long dated. It's almost half. Uh, it costs less because there's less time value. Notice that the delta is basically the same and that the volatilities are basically the same. But then now let's look at the column uh, listed as gamma. The gamma on the short dated option is almost twice as much and the vega is half as much. Notice that the theta is negative because this is a, a, a call position and we're looking at assuming long position here, that the theta is more negative on the short dated. So this kind of highlights the, 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 the nuanced differences between shorter dated options and longer dated. If you've got the same underlying product, the same strike price, the same style, but different days to expiration, you can see the dramatic difference between the two and how that might affect the performance of that option relative to changes in the price of the underlying. So let's, uh, for, before I go into examples, does anyone have any questions? If not, I'll keep going ahead and we can save questions to the end. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I forgot to mention just quickly to, to everyone, um, please pop your questions in the chat if anything um, springs to mind and, and we'll deal with that in a Q&A section after David's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, let's look at uh, the first example of, of the trader or the risk manager having a directional bias on the market. Uh, assume it's Thursday, the 18th of January, just a few days ago, and the trader has a bullish bias on the S&P index. Uh, wants to use the options product as a possible uh, alternative to just going long futures. Uh, and the expectation of using the short dated option would be that they're going to get this bullish move in the S&P index sooner rather than later. So if the March futures contract is at 47.68, let's look at buying two of the at the money calls for Monday expiration two different Monday expirations. You'll notice uh, it's the trade date is the 18th of January and there's two uh, expirations listed there. Again, same underlying futures contract, same strike price, both of them are calls reflecting that uh, a, a bullish market position so that the options trader would be buying these positions. The Jan 22s only have four days until expiration where the Jan 29s have 11 days, another week later. But notice the difference in the premiums. The Jan 22 is lower. The deltas are the same for both. And the gamma is greater on the short dated option, but the theta is also greater. 
So you can see the differences here uh, in uh, real life, uh, real priced options premiums and their Greeks relative to the same underlying futures product for which they're both referencing their prices, but two different expiration dates. Um, if the trader elects to use the shorter dated Jan 22 option, they will pay the full premium, 22 and a quarter index points. Each one of those points is worth $50. Their total outlay would be $1,112.50 for one call option. Just one day later, uh, on the 19th of January, uh, a mark to market of this position shows that the S&P 500 futures have risen by 100 index points from 47.68 to 48.68, 100 points higher. What's happened to the option prices? Well, if we look at the Jan 22 and the Jan 29s, they're now one day closer to expiration, three days and 10 days respectively. Notice the changes in the premium and notice the significant changes in the delta, particularly of the shorter one uh, relative to the longer one. That is the influence of that twice as large gamma on the delta. Uh, and you'll notice that the, uh, the time decay has fallen on the short dated uh, uh, option because it is now deeply in the money. Uh, it's uh, the sensitivity of the theta is greatest when the strike is near the money or at the money. This option is now in the money. Uh, but maybe more importantly to, for, for, for our purposes, let's take a look at the trade results. On a mark-to-market basis, the Jan 22, if we just consider a long futures position, long one March futures contract with a price point 100 points higher would generate a profit of $5,000. And if you assume an initial margin of roughly $15,000 on that position, uh, you would have made a 33% return on your money. That's, that's very good. But now let's consider the longer of the two options. That long Jan 29 position, which had the same delta at the point of execution, uh, had a higher, slightly higher premium, um, produced a net return of 28 and a, uh, sorry, 68 and a quarter index points, or a, a profit of roughly uh, 3,412 and 50 cents, 91 percent return. Now that's significantly greater than the 33 percent return on the futures contract. But then let's consider the short dated option. That one produced the highest rate of return because of the increase in the change in the premium because of the higher gamma. Uh, so you paid a smaller premium, but you got a bigger bang for the buck because of the increased gamma for which you paid a higher uh, time decay uh, value. So you're not getting anything, you don't get something for nothing in the marketplace. You're gonna have to pay. You pay a premium to go long uh, and you pay time decay to go long. But in this case, the shorter option performed better because of the higher gamma. And that's an important thing to be mindful of as we explore these further. Now, if you had taken the opposite side of this trade and been short, uh, obviously, you can see what a disaster that could be in terms of unlimited risk uh, as both uh, time is running out, but the increased gamma has a increasingly negative effect if the market direction isn't correct on an outright long options position. Now let's consider another example, uh, again, with a directional bias. It's Assume it's Tuesday, the 16th of January, and you've got a bullish bias on WTI crude oil. Uh, the, the contract we're going to be tracking is the March crude oil futures. They're trading at 72.50, and you want to buy a slightly out of the money call to reflect a bullish bias. And this is a Friday option with three days left until expiration. So you're expecting a move higher in crude oil prices, and you're expecting it relatively soon. I mean, almost immediately. Three days to trade. It's a 75 even call. The premium you can see is very, very small. It's only uh, 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 six index points. Each one of those is worth $10. A very small delta, a very small gamma and vega, and very little time decay because it's out the money. So it doesn't take much to express this position. It's only a $60 risk position. That's the maximum you can lose on this trade. But if the market were to rocket above 75 in crude oil, 
the delta would be increasing at an increasing rate, which would be increasing the premium on this option at an accelerating rate. What happens uh, at expiration three days later? Unfortunately, the futures price settled at 73 and a quarter, which is well below the strike price of 75. The option expires worthless. This particular position loses the $60 that was placed. Uh, trader loses the full premium. So this is a, an example of, let's just say on the following Monday, uh, the 22nd, the crude oil prices trade and settled above 75. Well, that's sad because this trader had a bullish view, but time ran out. And it doesn't make any difference if on Monday you're above 75, if your options expired on the preceding Friday. So again, timing as well as market direction plays an important point in the cho choice of the expiration of the option that you want to use. Let's continue with a couple more examples. This time we're going to look at some spreads. Uh, I, uh, about 70% of the options business that's done at CME is done through spread transactions. And in some products, it might even be higher than that. What we want to consider when we look at spreads is the net effect of the deltas, the gammas, the vegas, and the thetas, as well as the positive and negative influence of receiving and paying premium because you're going to be long and short. Um, in this case, you're looking at a, uh, a call butterfly and uh, what's done on the wings, those are the uh, strike prices that are on the outside, is the, the, the direction of the butterfly. So this is a long um, call butterfly. In this case, uh, it's got six days to expiration. You're going to be buying one of the 7125 calls in crude oil, buying, uh, selling two at the money. 73 and a quarter calls and buying one uh, out the money call. You'll notice that the strikes on both uh, of the wings of the butterfly are equidistant from the middle. This is the working definition of a butterfly. Uh, you're long, in this case, the wings and short the body. You have twice as many in the body as you have on the wings. So what we wanna look at in the table are the net effects. So the things that we're looking at in the short two call positions in the body are basically the premium, the deltas, gammas, vegas, thetas times two, and then uh, adding and subtracting those against the bodies. So you've got a position now that is a net debit, which is that means that the risk uh, to this position is limited to the premium paid, 58 index points. Notice that the delta is zero which means that this trade doesn't really have a directional bias at the point of execution because the body of the butterfly is the same as the underlying market. It is an at-the-money butterfly. Uh, gamma, slightly negative in this case. Vega, also slightly negative, but you've got positive time decay. So if the, if the market goes nowhere, uh, that should benefit this position. This is how it looks if you wanted to consider it graphically. Uh, again, you can notice uh, by the flat lines further out along the x-axis, that's the limited loss. The loss is limited to the premium paid. Uh, there is tremendous upside, almost three to one upside, if the market settles with uh, at expiration right at that uh, middle body at 73 and a quarter. So for traders or risk managers that are looking for a market that they think is going to maintain a relatively stable low vol environment, and you've got a three to one risk reward ratio with limited raw loss, uh, this is something that uh, might be considered as a possible trading strategy. You've got limited downside and an almost a three to one upside potential if the market settles at that middle strike. The opposite position or a, an, a, an opposite style type trade would be that you expect the market to move dramatically, uh, but, but you want to uh, put on a spread that reflects a, an ambivalence to the direction of that large move. So let's consider a short dated straddle. And we're going to use gold as our working example. Uh, assume it's the uh, Friday the 19th of January and February gold futures are at 2029.30. 
buying the at the money strangle it implies buying uh, in this case the 20 30 puts and calls long one of each this is an example of a spread that's using the, the two different types of options and long both both at the same strike price so you're going to be paying premium on both uh, and you're going to be um, in this case the combined debit is 22.3 or 22 uh, 3 index points, and that's a net debit, which means your loss and your risk is limited to the premium paid. Again, notice a very low delta, um, and that's because you're both long a put and long a call. So you're directionally relatively neutral at this point. What you want is that big gamma. Notice the gamma is twice as much as the individual uh, options themselves. So is Vega, and but unfortunately, so also is time decay. What the trader's looking for here is a big move in the underlying futures contract, but it doesn't care which direction that move takes. If it goes down in a big way, that's good. If it goes up in a big way, that's also good. The risk is limited in this case to the uh, a number of points, uh, and each point being ten uh, each uh, one tenth of a point being worth ten dollars. The total risk is two thousand two hundred and thirty dollars. Uh, if the market just sits still and the clock runs out, that's your maximum loss. But if particularly the sooner it moves, the better, uh, the upside could be theoretically unlimited. Uh, if the market worked, if, if the gold price in February futures was, was to drop by $100, uh, that would be a significant improvement to this trade. If the price of the February gold futures was to rise by $100, it would be a significant improvement to this spread trade, as long as it occurs prior to expiration of the option, which has got a very, very short time horizon. So what are your next steps to learn more about short dated options at CME? I want to provide you with uh, some examples of some tools and some resources that are available at cmegroup.com for you to continue your education around options and short dated options. Uh, the, the first thing I want to highlight are some of the product classes that might be of interest to you. In our energy, in our energy space, we list options on our standard WTI crude oil futures, and we have Monday, Wednesday, and Friday expirations. We have uh, short dated options on natural gas futures, but only the weekly Fridays and the same for the micro WTI and micro net gas, only the weekly Fridays at the, at, 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 at present uh, for the micro contracts. Um, if you were looking at the metals franchise, uh, we have short dated options in gold and copper daily, Monday through Friday, weekly expirations. And in the micro gold contract, we have options listed for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, as the volume and the open in interest increase in the micro contracts, there's every reason to expect CME to list those Tuesday, Thursdays at some point. But at present, only Monday, Wednesday, Fridays on the micros. But we have dailies, uh, Monday through Friday, short options in the standard gold, copper, and aluminum contracts. And then if you're uh, looking for uh, really daily expiration options, the equity index space is huge. We've got daily options listed out five weeks and then the longer dated options in monthlies and quarterlies beyond that. Uh, and when it comes to the equity index space, this includes the S&P 500, it includes the NASDAQ 100, the Russell 2000, and both uh, the micros as well as the standard size e-mini contracts. So a lot of different products to choose from uh, with short dated options at CME. If you want to continue your exploration on your own, I would so strongly suggest going to cmegroup.com. And if you click on the markets tab, it'll take you down to one of your choices is options. And if you go to op the, that options landing page, scroll down, you'll find lots of incredibly useful tools that are available to use at your own pace, your own speed, and the comfort of your own computer. One of these is powered by QuickStrike, one of our partners that provides uh, this third-party options content. QuickVol allows you to look, depending on the product and the way you want to view volatility, different ways of looking at the volatility of different options. 
In addition to that, there's a quick strike strategy simulator where you can put in the product, the strike, the type, and combine either outrights or spread transactions. And this includes not just two leg spreads, but you can do three legged butterflies, four legged condors, six leg Christmas trees, all kinds of different strategies and see how they will play out in terms of looking at the Greeks, the premium paid, and then you've got the graphic on the side to show you how the, uh, the P&L will perform over different market scenarios. Open interest heat map is another tool that's available through a quick strike, and that shows you the open interest in the various uh, products that list options by strike and expiration. I think this is an incredibly useful tool. It shows you, in this case, we're looking at gold. You can see the gold futures price uh, that, that, that represents the corresponding options, the options expirations, how many days are left, but then the strike prices vertically on the left, and then the, the green boxes showing the open interest in puts and calls for those various strikes and various expirations. Depending on the product, this could be very, very useful uh, if you are looking for where there could be, in many cases, large pockets of open interest. Uh, traders that are short those puts and calls at those strikes may be forced to do more delta hedging in the futures as the market approaches those strike prices. That could be incredibly uh, useful technical information for risk managers and traders as well. So I'm a big, big fan of the open interest heat map. If you go back to .com and you switch over to the data dropdown, you're going to have the ability to go to a thing called CME Group Volatility Index, which we call CVOL. Uh, this is CME's calculation of the volatilities of our benchmark products provided by the trading information in the options on those products. And you can look at it as a uh, intraday or end of day feed. And um, if you can see here, you've got the various products. You just uh, click on those and you can look at them. Uh, there's all kinds of analysis and there's even some expert explanations of what the terms mean on this website. This is an exciting new, relatively new product at CME uh, that I also find incredibly useful in terms of tracking volatility and the, uh, the volatility skews of puts and calls within a product um, can be incredibly useful in terms of another input in your decision making uh, tree. Uh, Mark, I'm going to pause there and uh, offer to take any questions that you might have in the chat or that, that you might get from any of your uh, staff or clients. Yeah, <clears throat> that's brilliant. Thanks very much, David. Um, I think that's um, uh, seeing seeing the micro and the minis and the, and the, all the, the days and, and, and whatever it really shows the, the options uh, kind of pun intended available to traders and that's brilliant there is a question here which i think is is, is a good one um what are some common mistakes to avoid when trading short dated options well uh i i think the, the the one that comes to mind is you need to be very careful of a short position uh because of the uh theoretically unlimited loss potential uh, a lot of brokers will not allow you to create a net short position without an enormous amount of capital to back it up so um, the examples that i used were intentionally meant to show long positions uh, and and because the long position whether it's in a spread and it's results in a net debit uh, results in a uh, limited risk of the premium paid i think that that's also a very sensible way to get started in these things. Knowing what your downside is and it's defined for you uh, is a good way to start. Uh, the, the second feature would be you have to have a point of view. Um, if you think the market's going to go in a certain direction or not go in a certain direction over a specific period of time, that helps define the parameters of your strike price, whether you're long or short, whether you're in puts and calls, but then also the expiration date. Where these things have become incredibly powerful for both risk managers and traders is trading around event risk. Um, many of you are probably aware that next week uh, we're going to be getting an enormous amount of employment information data in the United States, which is a big can be a big market mover. It begins on Tuesday. 
uh, with uh, 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 the job opening release. Uh, Wednesday, I believe, is the ADP private payroll number. Thursday, we get initial unemployment claims. And of course, Friday's big number is the what's called the employment situation, which includes non-farm payroll and the unemployment rate. Those uh, inputs, particularly Friday's non-farm payroll, can have a significant impact uh, on the market. So I can assure you that there, there will be a, a lot of trading in short dated options around that Friday date, either for Friday expirations or in many cases, um, depending on what's available, the Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday of the following week expirations to capture a move, a big move that could potentially be adverse uh, on that Friday non-farm payroll day. So being aware of potential event risk is one of the things these contracts are especially designed to be useful for. Um, but you, again, you have to have kind of a point of view about it. So you want to do your own homework. You want to be aware of how the, the, the things work and then, um, you know, trade at your own risk. Yeah, very good. Brilliant. Um, yeah, very much a lot of volatility around um, next Friday. We've got a slew of data as well today in, in, uh, in an hour and a half as well. Um, which I know that um, our clients will be looking at. Um, thank you very much, David. That's been absolutely brilliant. Um, for anyone who does have a question or, or was thinking of um, um, or comes up, has, has an idea later on for a question, please email us. We'll forward those on and, and, um, and, and we'll be happy to provide an answer for you. Um, please watch this space. We'll, we'll be having um, other webinars um, in the future. Um, and um, a parting word from um, our CEO. Well, yeah, once again, David, thank you so much for your time, your insight on the market. Um, as Mark said, sometimes a lot of questions come up after the event is finished. So please, as Mark said, email us. We will get these on. Um, you know, this is a area of the market we're seeing more and more interest in ourselves. So it was very insightful. I was I'd like to apologise for a little technical glitch at the beginning, which delayed the meeting. Um, hopefully, we will resolve the issues behind that and we won't suffer that again for future webinars. And, and obviously, we'll be publicising the um, event for the actual seminar as well, which will be an in-person event, which we're all looking forward to once again. So uh, thank you very much to the uh, CME group, to David Gibbs, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Have a, a really good rest of the day and uh, watch out for these data figures coming out later on. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks a lot.